Next up, the oldest and smallest vehicle in the bunch. But with a big heart, it became an unsung hero of the British Army. The British Universal Carrier. Manufacturer, Thornycroft. Power plant, one Ford 85 brake horsepower engine. Maximum speed, 48 kilometers per hour. Carrying capacity, two crew and four troops. Armor, 0.89 centimeters. Armament, 1.303 machine gun. Range, 209 kilometers. After the stalemate of trench warfare during World War I, Britain decided it needed a fast, mobile troop carrier that could take the fight to the enemy over any terrain. The result was unveiled in 1934. The British Universal Carrier. Have you ever seen a Universal Carrier? It is an almost comically tiny little thing. It looks like a toy. And it's dwarfed by a couple of strapping soldiers sitting in it. It looks bizarre. But what it does is it enables you to move around the battlefield over all kinds of terrain, the kind of thing that in the old days you'd slap on a horse. The Universal Carrier soon acquired a nickname after the .303 machine gun it carried. Most Brits call it the Bren gun carrier after the weapon system which it carried, but it also carried things like the boys' anti-tank rifle and, and could pull um, trailers and things like six-pounder anti-tank weapons. So I, I think that the Bren carrier is, is a typical example of British ingenuity in that period at the end of the 1930s when there was no money to rearm. And when, in 1939, World War II began, the little three and a half meters long Bren gun carrier with a top speed of 48 kilometers per hour carried British troops into battle. There must have been several thousand that went to France in 1942 to try and support the, the French army uh, in the event of a, a German invasion. When the Germans did invade, a lot of the equipment, in fact, the bulk of the British army in France, uh, most of the kit was left there, whether that was uh, field guns or rifles or, or brain gun carriers. Now, the Germans, being equally technically minded, saw the potential of this vehicle and pushed it into service. As the war progressed, the universal carrier was adapted from troop carrier to flamethrower, from mortar platform to ambulance. It went everywhere, and with the ability to be airlifted, it could get there in a hurry. It seemed that there was nothing that the Universal Carrier could not do. In just about every theatre of war, particularly in Northwest Europe and the North African desert, this is the vehicle you had to have. It almost became a status symbol. It was a clear an attempt to really do something that was, to a certain extent, transformational. Early on, to try and mechanize, if you will, uh, infantry forces to a large extent, to provide a way of moving, uh, other than trucks and, and cars, uh, material, supplies, troops, command and control elements, uh, officer, whatever, into the fight and through the fight. The idea was, was a great one. By the end of the war, Nearly 100,000 of these sturdy little fighters had been built, and the Universal Carrier remained in service until the mid-1950s. So it scores high on our matrix for production rating, as it does for innovation and service length. Marked down for its carrying capability and mobility rating, its scores are strong enough to earn seventh place on our list of the top 10 infantry fighting vehicles.